So you've probably been in this position, clicking the new game button and trying to decide what type of empire you want to play. However, there is so much more to the game than picking your ethics, traits and civics. Due to certain mechanics, you have the opportunity to use two very distinct play styles, which we're going to be discussing in today's video. Wide versus Tall. A lot of you have probably done the obvious. Expand and conquer everything around you, taking more and more space and crushing everything around you to add to your own, creating a massive stellar empire that dominates the map with its massive name, as it should do. This is an example of a classic wide style play. An empire of this type can be defined by the following. It has a large amount of planets, a massive population, tons of territory, and focuses mostly on supremacy and expansion traditions. However, there is less obvious things going on with wide empires. Most resources will generally come from planets. It'll have a relatively slow tech and tradition growth due to the technology modifier that it'll get you its huge amount of planets. Wide empires are constantly battling others for territory and resources, and everybody will hate you due to the potential border friction and threat modifiers. An empire of this type will, however, have a much stronger chance of combating fallen or awakened empires due to the large amount of resources that it has available for its fleets. Sadly, managing these resources optimally becomes a real chore as tracking all your worlds and production tiles is incredibly tedious and time-consuming, plus the sector AI cannot really be relied on when it comes to developing all of this. Factions and wide empires are difficult to control as their large populations make it difficult to suppress and promote a different type of ethics. Doing so also generates excessive amounts of unhappiness and unrest, creating a lack of resource production or potentially even a full-blown rebellion. Finally, I find that playing a wide empire creates longer games as things will slow down and mainly due to your lower tech growth, you'll be mostly fighting alliances and defensive packs on the same level as you. In addition to all the threats modifiers that you will be getting as well as the border friction, you'll be constantly at war and this will slow things down quite significantly, especially considering more action, larger fleets will slow down your CPU, effectively slowing down the game. Then there is Tall Empires. It's not really obvious that this is a potential playstyle, as it's not very clear that there are features in the game that support this kind of empire. And to be perfectly honest, you kind of do need to own the Utopia expansion to uh, be able to properly compete with this sort of civilization, uh, specifically because Galactic Wonders is absolutely required to be able to compete in the late game due to it giving you access to the Science Nexus. Now, key identifiers for a tall empiring are as follows. You rarely have more than four planets, you have tons and tons of territory, technology and unity focused, most of your resources will be coming from space and tributaries, and discovery, diplomacy, and domination traditions are generally focused on. Now, due to the technology scaling cost that is attached to planets and inhabitants, tall empires can be very competitive to its neighbors as they will outclass everything around them when it comes to technology within no time whatsoever. In addition, Unity Grove makes going through the tradition trees a Pretty much a breeze, allowing you to access important bonuses such as the Discovery Tree Safe and Science for the additional Unity production for assisting research, as well as the Domination Trees Fleet Levies and Protection Racket options for vastly improved resources from Vassals and Tributaries. Speaking of which, Tall Empires will have a lot of these, as Vassals are the main way of bolstering your fleets and most of their resources will be coming from Tributaries, as they have to hand over 25% of their production to their overlord, which is, I think, 37.5% with the protection racket option enabled. As, um, yeah, that basically makes for an easier game having these. 
Uh, tall empires also have an easier time creating federations, which they can use to subjugate more vassals and create more tributaries, essentially snowballing out of control as soon as they get their first friend in space. As mentioned, resource-wise, tall empires generate their resources mostly from space, specifically minerals, as their worlds are generally tailored towards generating science, unity, and energy. No minerals are produced on their worlds, even if there is natural bonuses to them. Planets are generally picked based on their plus 19 tile sizes with strong and natural bonuses. The midterm goal of a tall empire is to create a science nexus megastructure, which when completed will vastly increase research uh, output and make these type of empires pretty much unstoppable due to the repeatable text that they can access quickly and efficiently getting more bonuses to their fleets and other output. Factions are generally easier to control as you'll have a smaller population which causes small amounts of FX diversion which means they're all packed into the same factions which means you will have a large amount of influence to work with. It also means that you have a easier time shifting your ethics if you so want to do as there's a smaller population which means there's less people to suppress which means there is easier growth in the direction that you want to go. Overall this means that a tall empire has a very small but incredibly happy and productive society. Now all the excess influence you can spend on a large amount of territory for a faction of its size. Since a tall empire relies heavily on space resources, it needs to gain as much territory as, uh, as possible, as fast as possible. Sadly, they're fairly vulnerable to wars as an empire only need to claim a few systems to take full control over any tall empire. Early game is especially dangerous as it doesn't have the ability to outtech the enemy early on, and with only up to four planets, the amount of fleet capacity that you have, as well as replenishing those fleets, becomes problematic. Especially if there is a particularly hostile enemy next door. Now there is one very specific type of tall empire, which is very susceptible to this. Is that's the one planet challenge type, which as the name implies, has one planet, but incredible technology and unity growth. I'll be doing a separate video about that type. Of empire. Now, a lot of people out there have requested me to do this video for a while now. What were the differences between wide and tall? I hope that this was useful to you and that you learned a little bit more about Stellaris and gave you the inspiration to play something different. No more wide. Play a little bit of tall. Have some fun. See your empire snowball out of control as everything falls in front of you creating more tributaries and vassals with every single year. Until next time, take good care of yourselves, and as always, eat shudder.